my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and welcome to another video. Now today, how about we make a wrap skirt that doesn't feature any closures, therefore it really is super straightforward and really easy to make. And I mean, no zippers, no buttons, no hooks. You will see what it is all about in just a few moments and I think you're really going to love it. So let's go ahead and make the perfect wrap skirt for any season, but especially for this upcoming summer. started with drafting and sewing and putting all together, I like to take a moment and think, okay, what is the goal that I'm working on here and how do we get there? So I started by thinking, what is the garment? And the garment in this case going to be sort of like an A-line skirt. And as I mentioned, it's going to be a wrap garment. And when we're talking about wrap clothing, it doesn't really matter whether it's a top, a skirt or a dress. It means that at some point it overlaps. So there is a piece of fabric fabric that goes on the bottom and a piece of fabric that goes on the top. And it can overlap by a little bit, but it can also overlap by quite a bit. It really just depends on you. So once I have that idea in my mind, here comes the next step. So first we need to take just a couple of very basic measurements. Everybody can do it, so I truly believe that you will be able to do it as well. So grab your measuring tape and here's my natural waist. So this is this is where the top of the skirt is. Go ahead and slide your measuring tape about two inches or approximately five centimeters lower than your waist. Take this measurement, divide in half, and that's what we're going to put as our first measurement on our pattern paper. Now now let's say your measurement is 40 divided in half, it will be 20, that's what's gonna go right over here. And I actually went ahead and folded my paper in half, so here you see the crease line. And we're gonna go back to the same example of 20. So you want to make sure that 20 is right in the middle of this line. So 10 on one side, 10 on the other side. If you have 15, it will be seven and a half on one side, seven and a half on the other side, and so forth. So whatever was your measurement, place it on the top over here, dividing it equally in the middle of your paper. Then from where you measured your first measurement, go ahead and put your finger right over here, then take your measuring tape and on the side of your body, measure the distance from your first measurement all the way to the fullest part of your hip. So measure that distance, put your finger on there, and this is what's gonna go on our pattern paper right over here in the middle. And then of course we want to measure the fullest part of your hips the same way as we did our first measurement. Put your measuring tape around and we're going to use half of this measurement to put right over here. Again, we're going to divide it equally between one side and the other. Now here from the top where we took our first measurement, we have to determine how long we want our skirt to be. So whatever is that measurement, go ahead and place it right over here and then a straight line all the way down as long as you want your skirt to be. So far pretty straightforward, right? So we have our top measurement, the distance from our top measurement to our hips, our hip measurement, and however long you want your skirt to be. Now right now I'm just going to add some extra paper to the sides here because my original paper isn't quite wide enough for the next step. And obviously you can skip this, you don't have to do it. It just really depends on how wide is your paper. Now, next step is to create a side seam. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to connect the top two measurements with a straight line. Now that line is going to be on the angle and that's exactly what we want. Now, once that line is done, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and continue that line under the same angle, just a straight line, continuing out of it. Now, I need to determine how long my side seam is going to be. And that length is going to be exactly the same as the total skirt length that we determined earlier. So go ahead and mark that measurement right over here. Then I'm just using the good old circle skirt method as you can see me do right now on a screen with a measuring tape. I'm just marking the same distance, the total length of the skirt all the way on the hem so that way I get that really nice, smooth, slightly curved hem. Now here on the top of the skirt, I want to curve it in a little bit, 
That way it will actually sit on our body a little bit better. So I'm taking a little bit less than an inch down the center front and then I'm just gonna go ahead and curve it in. And I actually have only one side of the pattern piece done. So now I'm gonna go ahead and copy that on the other side so that way I have one full pattern piece ready. All right, now that that is done, let me show you how it looks on the body when we put it like this. There we go, it starts to resemble the skirt. Now, if we would have been doing just an A-line skirt, this could basically be the front and the back, but because we're doing a wrap skirt, we need to take this pattern piece, copy it in full on a new piece of paper, and do a slight modification. Alright, a copy of the pattern is done and before we proceed further, this is what we need to double check. Take your both pattern pieces, alright, this is the top, this is the bottom, lay them side seam to side seam and you want to make sure that the bottom is super smooth. So where one pattern piece ends and the other pattern piece starts actually forms a really nice smooth line. And we want to take a look and see if that is the same for the top as well. You might see a tiny little bump right over here, but all in all it should be pretty smooth transition as well from one pattern piece to another pattern piece. Now because this is a wrap skirt and we want the front pattern pieces to be one on top of another, so to create sort of an overlay, we also want to curve in one of the corners just to create that beautiful design element. And here you have to decide for yourself what kind of curve you would like. So take a look at inspiration online, but I find that what is really helpful is if you take the corner that you want to curve in, at this point it doesn't really matter which one, you want to make sure that you kind of bring it in to depending on what kind of curve you would like to have. So let's say bring it in like this. There we go. And from here, it is a little bit easier than to curve in this little part. Go, 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 and curve in this little part as well. So let's go ahead and do that together. Now once the curve is done, it will look like so and when you put it on your body, you can see where is the center line and where the curve goes. Obviously if you want it to be closer to the middle, you go ahead and make your curve closer to the middle. If you want to have some sort of other shape of the curve, let's say a triangular shape, then go ahead and do that. It just all depends on your preference and your design idea and your creativity. And right now, we need to go ahead and cut the pattern pieces. Here I'm working with one yard of this beautiful floral viscose. It's a woven non-stretch and it has a beautiful drape. Now I got it on fabric.com, but you can actually purchase it on Amazon as well. So if you wanna check this out, I will leave the link for you guys in the info box below. Now for you, of course, you might need more fabric, you might need less fabric. Definitely make the pattern first, make a test garment, and after that you'll be able to judge what you like, what you don't like, and how much fabric do you need. So one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure that the curve on the bottom from one pattern piece to another pattern piece is really smooth and creates one continuous line is because I want to cut all of the pattern pieces as one continuous long pattern piece without any seams. And I laid everything down, I calculated the amount of fabric, and I'm missing just a tiny piece right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to adjust the curve of the front pattern piece a little bit so that way I can fit everything into this one piece of fabric. And of course make sure that you have extra fabric because we will need it for the belt. So here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna adjust my pattern piece and it actually works in my favor and I'll explain why a little bit later in the video. But once this is done, I'm ready to place my pattern pieces on the fabric. Please note how it actually is placed on the fabric. So the back pattern piece is actually folded in half because my fabric is also folded in half. So I have 
half of my back pattern piece and the full front because it's going to be overlapping and we're going to cut it on the fold. So the whole skirt is just gonna be one full pattern piece. And as always, when I draft my patterns, I don't draft them with seam allowances. Therefore, I add my seam allowances and my hem allowances as I cut my fabric. That's the reason I'm cutting it a little bit bigger right now. The first thing that I'm going to do in order to start putting together my skirt is the hem. And I'm going to use a rolled hem technique. It's perfect because we have a curve and I find that rolled hem works really well in situations like these. Now you can use a rolled hem foot or you can do it by hand. I do it by hand just by using a normal foot on my sewing machine. And I have a full video about this technique and how to do it. So I'm not gonna go into detail and I will leave the link for it for you guys in the info box below. But it's really easy. You just basically roll your fabric twice and that's the hem. After my hem is complete, I'm reaching for the leftover fabric that I have after cutting out the skirt because that is now going to become the belt. And here's no magic pattern drafting or anything sophisticated. I'm literally just folding the leftover fabric in half and cutting into two long strips of fabric. Each one of them is approximately six inches wide and as long as I can make it. After that, I'm just tidying up the ends of the fabric and I'm going to sew one of the short ends. So I'm placing two strips right sides together and I'm stitching the short ends. Once that is done, I really just want to double check that I like the length of the actual belt on the skirt. So I'm gonna go ahead, fold the belt in half and pin it to the skirt. And after that, I will try to not to stab myself with all of the pins that are in that belt. So if you're doing the same thing that I'm doing, please be very careful. And I put it on myself awkwardly and I try to determine whether I like the length of the belt or not. And you know what? I actually do. So this next step is for me to mark the position of the skirt on the belt. So I make two little notches here and here so that way I know that this where the skirt is ending on the belt so I have some extra length of the belt for the ties. Now, because I'm working with viscose and viscose is really nice and flowy, but I want some extra stability in the belt part, but only where it wraps around my body. I don't want any stability in the part where it's going to be tied in the bow. So I'm reaching for some light interfacing. You can also use medium interfacing if, you, if you'd like. And I'm going to place a strip of interfacing inside of the belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and fuse that first. But again, I'm only placing it from one notch that we made earlier through another notch that we made earlier. So I don't want to place interfacing on the ends of the belt. After interfacing is attached, here comes another part. And again, we're going to be working from the end of the belt to the notch and from another end of the belt to another notch. So we're now going to be sewing the entire belt. And what I want to do right now is to place the ends of the belt right sides together. And I want to sew from the end to the notch, from the notch to the end, leaving the middle open. Once you have sewn the ends of your belt, let's go ahead and snip the corners. So that way it's a little bit easier for us to turn them right side out. And that's exactly what we're going to do next. After you have turned out both sides, so one side of the belt and the other side of the belt, we're gonna go ahead and give them a really good press. Now, once you're getting closer to the part of the belt that we did not sew together, take a look at what I'm doing here. I'm just folding in the seam allowance to the inside of the belt, and then I'm continuing to press it. So that way, both of the seam allowances on one side and on the other side are now inside of the belt, and it's really easy for us to move forward. Now go ahead and lay the belt flat on your table or on the floor. 
take the skirt and this is the most interesting and fun part we're going to place the raw edge of the skirt so the top part of the skirt inside of that opening of the belt and what I do next is first I secure everything with pins and after that I take a thread and a hand sewing needle and I baste it all together so that way I know it doesn't move anywhere. Of course you can do that on your sewing machine as well or you can skip it all together and leave the pins but I do find that this extra step of basting it together really gives you the best result and uh, lets you avoid any frustration that might follow. So now I'm going to attach that belt by stitching on the right side of our project so on the right side of our skirt by stitching on the very edge of that belt and I know that this is going to catch both sides because I did baste it everything together and I want to do that from one side of the skirt all the way to the other side of the skirt so that way the whole belt is now attached to the body of the skirt. Don't forget to secure all of your threads and tidy them up and at this point we have one last step left to do. I like to put the skirt on myself and determine where exactly do I want to make an opening for my belt to go through so that way we can truly make this a wrap skirt. Now once you have marked that position on your body go ahead and take the skirt off and now we're going to do the following. You can of course just make a simple buttonhole with your sewing machine, it's not a problem at all, but I do enjoy when it actually has a bit more stability to it because this is going to be an area that will have a little bit of stress on it, therefore I like to bind it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the leftover fabric from this project and I'm going to cut a little piece of bias tape. After that I'm gonna go ahead and take my hand sewing needle and thread and I'm going to outline the position where I want that little opening to be. And now onto the sewing machine so that way I can stitch inside of that hand basting. In my case this is going to be oval shape. For you it might be a rectangle, whatever you're comfortable with. Once that is done comes the scariest part. <laughs> it really isn't that scary but it, it can be nerve-wracking at first because you're cutting into a project that is almost done. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little opening and of course you know measure twice, cut once. It's always a good advice just to double check before you do this. And I do a little opening and now I need to insert a bias tape around this opening. So I make sure that I attach the short ends of the bias tape and so that way it's of the size that would fit perfectly into that little opening. And then again I baste it by hand just to make sure that nothing moves because we are working with small parts over here. And then with a straight stitch on the edge of the bias tape, I attach the bias tape to this opening. And ta-da! Now we have an opening for your belt to go through to truly create a wrap skirt. We have a skirt that is wrap style about knee length with an opening in a belt so that way we can pull the other end of the belt through. We can tie a pretty bow on the side and then we also have a curved hem in the front and I actually happen to really really like it. Now I would love to give you a couple of pointers before we end and wrap this video. Number one, you don't have to do everything the way that I do it. I'm just sharing with you what I did in order to achieve this particular result. You can do whatever your heart desires. Do you have to cut the pattern piece as one continuous piece of skirt? No, you can actually cut the back and the two parts of the front as separate pattern pieces. So do what's right for you. Now if you're not sure if you're going to have enough fabric for the belt, go ahead and count it through before you cut the main fabric. In my case I was pretty sure I was going to have enough and therefore I did. One of the reasons why we took the measurement not at your waist but below it because I have to account for the actual width of the belt so that way the skirt doesn't sit here but actually sits on my waist. And of course you don't have to do the opening in the belt the way that I did it. You can just use a simple buttonhole function on your sewing machine and that will do it 
as well. And the reason why adjusting the side of the skirt actually played in my favor is because I had to allow a little bit of extra room in order to, one, wrap the skirt and then thread that belt through the opening and tie the beautiful bow so that way that bow is on the side and not looking more towards the back. So that's one of the reasons why shortening the sides of the skirt worked really well here. Here's an important thing to add about ease. As you might have noticed, I didn't add any ease to my measurements as I was drafting the skirt for two reasons. Number one, I figured the actual wrap of the skirt is going to take care of the ease. Besides, number two, the ease is quite minimal. I mean, the ease still should be there because we need to move around. However, the top part of the skirt and the skirt that rests at my upper hips sits pretty closely to my body. Therefore, I figured, you know what, not to confuse anybody and just to make it a little bit easier I'm just gonna go with the measurements themselves if you find that you do need ease please make a test garment first see how it fits and then proceed with your actual fabric now, what about fabric? Well, in this case, I'm using viscose, which is really great for projects like that, but you can use a wide variety of different fabrics for this particular skirt. Now, if you're having trouble choosing fabrics for your sewing projects, then go ahead and watch this video right over here. I made it specifically so that we dive a little bit deeper into what kind of fabrics there are and what kind of fabrics are great for a particular sewing projects. So click right over here and I'll see you very soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy sewing, stay thoughtful, and stay creative. Bye.